Hi everyone, Joe Soto here, and I'm glad you took the next step to come watch this video. This is the 17 uh, ways to find new clients in your local market. And I'll tell you what, some of you have seen other training videos I've done before where I taught, you know, four or five ways, uh, maybe six, seven ways, I don't know, but you've never seen me teach 17 ways. And so with that said, and this isn't an exhaustive list, I'm probably gonna even in the course give you even more ways, but here's the thing. I wanted to quickly put together a list of, of, of as many as I could think of off the top of my head that we use in our agency and that I use for myself to find new local consulting clients. Now when I say local, yeah, I, you know, I think everyone should start with their own backyard because I think there's nothing more valuable than being able to actually interact in person with some of your clients, particularly when you're first starting out so you can really learn the type of business problems these people go through plus they're easier to sell. Now with that said, uh, can you be more productive even over the phone, selling to clients or even using the internet? Uh, you know, you've all seen these methods for finding clients using online funnels, using Facebook ads. Um, and sure, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But the, I, the, the point is, some of these methods I'm going to give you, you're going to use Facebook ads inside of these methods. Um, but th at the end of the day, this is going to be different than what you're being taught online. Because I think everyone thinks it's some sort of magic pill. That if I put together this online funnel, there's going to be thousands of people coming my way that want to do business with me. And not all of us have the quite honestly, the aptitude or the personality that fits those models. And so I want to just give something different and something that works as well. That's more importantly. So if you're catching this video before catching the other ones, so the last video I talked a little bit about um, how I had a combined 17 years of experience between owning my own sales training company and owning my own social media, my now digital marketing company called Revenue Inbound. We've had over 350 clients all around the country, over 30 or 40 states now in three different countries. Um, it's been really exciting. I've spoken all around the country at different con uh, workshops and conferences, but at the end of the day, um, what my core skill set is, is in training and teaching how to go out there and do the things that I do on a weekly basis, which is find clients, sell the clients, uh, delivering the results to the clients, and then generating referrals. And that was the system that we talked about in the last video. Those four things. I drew a little triangle and said you have to be a master at all four of these things. Finding the clients, selling the clients, because <laughs> some people just don't understand the sales process or even how to sell the clients, and then being able to deliver the results, which is ultimately the most important thing for you and for your client, and then being able to generate referrals. That's kind of that lost secret or art to being able to do this right. So I'm excited. Here's the 17 ways. And now this isn't in any particular order. I hate to say this, but I kind of just threw this list together and I'm not scripted even delivering these videos. If you can't tell, I'm just winging this off the top of my head. However, I have given it thought. I do have lots of, of, of uh, notes and I have provided handouts for you below this video. So you can download uh, the handouts and the worksheets and go through it yourself and that way you don't have to take a lot of notes while you're watching this You can just listen and understand how I describe these 17 ways So let's talk about the first way. This is really while this isn't maybe the first way you'll you'll use to find the clients It's going to be one of the most significant ways you find clients down the road It could be at the in the beginning as well But more importantly, I think as you get into your consulting business you find a couple of two three four clients this will be your number one way. So I put it first because it's the most important for me. Um, it generates the most clients for me and it will for you as well. And it takes, um, you know, the least amount of effort and it's fun. So the first way, remember there's 17 here and if you've already downloaded the worksheet, you know these already, but let me talk about each one of them. So the first way is through creating a local business alliance. Okay. A local business alliance. So what does that mean? That means um, finding a small group of people. And that small group can be one person, two people, three people. Ideally, it's you know four or five people that you can meet with regularly, that you, that you have formed an alliance with to refer clients back and forth to each other. Now, there's bigger groups that do this. We're going to talk about that later. It's one of the 17. But in this case, I'm talking about a local business alliance. So what do I mean by that? Well, for instance, who else sells to your ideal client? So if you sell to uh, restaurants or you sell to real estate or, uh, or, uh, businesses or real realtors, or maybe you sell to attorneys or you sell to uh, salons and spas. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to talk about in this course the uh, what I believe to be the five best local niches for you to target and focus on. 
if you're a local business consultant. I'm talking about the ones that are like the easiest to sell. <laughs> so um, stay tuned for that. So here, here's the thing. But if you sell to any type of business like this, maybe it's a weight loss clinic. Maybe you focus on weight loss clinics. Whatever you sell to, you have to think about who else is selling to your client that is selling something that is unrelated to what you sell, or it's not a direct com competing product or service to what you're selling. So if you're selling, if you're a consultant or, or coach that's selling digital agency services, but maybe you don't sell SEO, you just sell uh, website design. Maybe you're a website design uh, consultant. Well, going and finding an SEO firm or maybe a social media agency would be a great little business relationship to have and say, look, guys, I do websites, you do social media and SEO, let's partner. And um, we'll, we'll refer each other to clients, okay? Now, the beauty in that is uh, if you have a few clients to refer to them right away, this is going to be really effective. If you don't, then you need to just let them know that your intentions are to do that for them. And in fact, you know, one of the things I tell the people, listen, I'm not here because no one wants people to start, you know, infiltrating their book of business. Just remember that. <laughs> I, I get people all the time will take this piece of advice and like, oh, I met with so-and-so and they don't want me to be in their network because they think I just want their contacts. Well, you probably presented yourself that way. So the best way to get a new Business Alliance member to be part of your group is to give them a re client referral. So if you, this is why this works best. Now, to hang on with me, though, because it's powerful. This is why it works best, though, when you have two, three, four, five clients that you can genuinely refer to somebody else. So I'll give you an example. So if, if um, in my case, one of my agencies, I have a couple different marketing agencies. One of our kind of sister agencies, if you will, where I've focused a niche of selling to restaurants in. It's called Rockfish Marketing. We have inside of that business, um, I have a local little business alliance of, of some other people that also sell to restaurants. So I have somebody who sells payroll services, um, processing, uh, credit card processing, um, insurance. You know, there's somebody in my network that sells insurance to restaurants and that's their main focus. Well, and he can lower their insurance uh, and, and, uh, and it's great because I feel comfortable that I can refer my clients to him. So, and then, you know, uh, the person who offers the payroll and, and, and processing has been doing it for like seven years. So I'm comfortable that I can refer my clients also to him. And he does the same. Um, inside of our alliance, we also have somebody who's a wine rep that sells wine to restaurants. And so that's great because we share some of the same uh, clients as well, restaurants and bars. And I mean, you get the picture. So, you know, if you think about who sells to your client. And now if you sell, let's say you're a digital marketing agency and you do, you do it all. Well, you're not going to, you know, if you do everything, then you, you're going to be limited to, you know, completely different services. But if you, let's say you're specializing in, you have a video marketing business and you, you're a consultant and you do video marketing. Well, maybe you don't do website design. So you better find somebody in the area that you can trust as a website designer who also needs clients. Now, if you're referring business to them first, it shows that good intention. It's that good first step to say, look, man, I know, I, I know you've got a lot of clients. I'm fairly new starting in the area. So let me refer a couple of clients to you before you feel comfortable uh, sending some clients to me, just so you understand my intentions are good. Just be honest and upfront with people when you meet with them and meet with them for coffee. You can reach out to them on LinkedIn. You can call them up because ten, these people tend to have phone numbers in their business. And they're always looking for business anyway. Um, you might call somebody who has a website company. For instance, um, I, don't design uh, our own websites. I have, I outsource most of that. And so I'm always looking for new vendors and, and partners to refer business to. So for a website design, company, I might call them and say, look, I've got some website projects that I'm going to have for you in the near future. I'd love to talk with somebody, uh, particularly the owner about uh, referring some business to them. So get them to get on the phone with you and say, you know, let's meet for coffee. And I can talk to you about what I have planned for the future that we, I can bring to the table. I can really help you out. And then, you know, you could present to them there, look, you know, one of the things I'm looking for is to have an alliance with somebody that I can count on every single time to refer clients to. But I also just would like to ask for in return that you think of me first when you have clients that need, let's say, for example, in my case, social media marketing. So uh, you're, you're being honest with them. You're being sure you're not just trying to infiltrate their, their book of business. And you can tell them that because that's what they're afraid of. But if you if you get good at reaching out to these people, you just have to use your head and say, OK, what does my what does my client purchase or buy. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you an example. So let's say my target is attorneys or lawyers. Guess what all attorneys or lawyers have in their office? They have copy machines in their office. They have office machines. They have big, giant, expensive leased, they've leased these big, usually leased them or they're buying, they're, they're getting them on payment plans or, or they've purchased a really expensive copy machine because they print out a lot of paper. Um, so go find the office systems rep that sell them, sells them and sold them 
that, that uh, office machine. And how do you do that? You can call up an attorney and say, look, I'm not trying to bother. You can walk into any attorney's office and just say real quick, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out who sold you guys your office machines. And you know what? Because you're not soliciting them, you're not trying to do, they'll tell you. They'll say, you know what? Here's the card of, of you know, Jimmy. You sold us the office machine. Great. My business might be in, 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 in the business of looking for an office machine. And I figure that you guys probably have the best because the attorneys always have the best office machines. They'll tell you who, the, who their rep is. They'll tell you who the person is that sold it to them. Go have lunch. Go buy that person lunch and uh, tell them you might have some referral business for them. And it's true, especially if they're happy. And, well, if, here's the thing. Here's the caveat. If you're talking to a office, uh, if you're talking to a lawyer, and maybe you're talking to the administrative assistant who sits at the front, and he or she says, well, we're not happy with our office machines. They give us a lot of problems. That might not be the rep you want to choose in, uh, as part of your business alliance. You want somebody who they feel comfortable with. So you might say, well, how, how's he doing? Is he servicing you well? Is he doing great? If they say, oh man, Jimmy is fantastic. He's always in here. If we have any problems with our machine, he's in. He's the first one in here in the morning. That's who you want to work with because you can go to him with that compliment and say, look, man, I heard that you're on top of it when these people have issues and I want to work with you. Uh, that's how you gain new friends that are in the business of what you're doing and you start this local business line. It's the most powerful way. I'll tell you this, right now, probably, uh, I would say 60 to 70% now of my clients come from this one way. We refer business to each other. And I'll tell you what, not everybody will want this because they genuinely just want you to help their clients, but they may want you to uh, uh, introduce them an incentive system. So what I do is I offer, if you bring a new client to me, I'll pay you 10% on their, up, on their uh, setup for, or their first month's uh, fee, and I'll pay you 10% residual. on that client if they become a retainer based client. And that's pretty good. I mean, I've got one of my referral partners that gets a good little paycheck from us uh, every single month. It's like a side business almost, just like a little, because we're each other salespeople, helping each other. And so this is number one. <laughs> we're like 12 minutes into this video and I've only given you one of the 17. So I'm gonna go through a few of these other ones faster um, because I'm diving into all of these inside my course. In fact, I'm going to teach you in the course more what to say and how to say it so you can get these alliance partners really locked in. So I have some notes down here. Uh, pardon me for, for looking at them. Uh, so no, no, number two way, I've talked about this in some previous trainings uh, as well, but I really want to outline it here too, is that you can find people, uh, particularly if you sell digital marketing services of any kind, who are struggling online. Now, um, so let's talk about this. So let's, let's talk about how to find some of the clients. So one of the ways is by uh, going to Google and finding people who are, have not claimed their own Google listing. So they're not showing up on Google Maps correctly. They're not showing up on Google with a Google listing correctly. You know when you Google a local business and it should show up uh, with them pulling up on the right side with their business and their, uh, their logo and, or maybe some pictures of their food or their, or, or, or their restaurant if they're a restaurant or pictures of their building or whatever it might be, along with their website information, their hours are open and all that, that's a good Google listing. And a lot of businesses don't have it still. I don't, it's like, it's an epidemic. I don't know how this is possible. But here's how you find those businesses in one shot doing a Google search. I'm gonna give it to you right here and I'm gonna write it out for you, all right? So you're gonna go to Google And you're going to find people who haven't claimed their Google. And why would you do this? Let's talk about why you would do it. Because people who haven't claimed, claimed their Google listing or don't show up on Google Maps have overlooked how important it is for them to be found as a local business on Google. So I don't care what kind of business coach or consultant you are. Um, if you can help somebody with this, it's your foot in the door for other services that you provide. Because believe me, if somebody doesn't have their Google listing, they probably need help in other areas. Their website's probably bad. Their business is probably not ran very well. I mean, they're, they're missing the boat. And so they tend to be people who um, just, you know, don't get, don't, don't get it. But it's a foot in the door. So you may just say, look at me, I'll even help you with this part for free. Uh, if you want to meet for 30 minutes, I can get all the information from you. And that's your door opening to be able to have a conversation with them that's longer about the services that you offer in addition to this. But this is a way that we've gotten our foot in the door with some people just saying, look, I looked you up on Google. I can't find your business and your com competition is stealing your customers. They're getting your, I've, I've actually messaged people and said, I can see that your customers are going to your competitors because they can't find you on Google correctly. They're finding your competitors correctly on Google. So let's talk about how do you search this to find people who don't have the correct listing versus you know, instead of just having to search everybody. So you type in um, site. This is how you search any website, by the way, just site colon. And then you're going to put 
uh, plus Google, because it's still listed as plus Google. And right before I did this video, I tested this to see how well it worked, and it still worked really well. Okay, uh, google.com. Now, then you're going to have a space. So this is all one word, all together. There's no spaces in here. Okay, site colon plus dot google dot com. And you're going to put space. This is space. Uh, all one line, though, is um, you can, there's a couple ways you can do it. Is this your business? Google doesn't even know if it's their business, right? Is this your business? In quotation marks. And then you're going to do the plus sign. This is space between here and the plus. Plus, and you can put whatever you want. You can put restaurant. You can put attorney. Um, so let's do uh, attorney. Plus, and you can do, let's say, Houston, your area. Houston, Texas. You can do Topeka, Kansas, Cleveland, Ohio. I don't care what you put. So site colon plus dot google dot com space is this your business in quotation marks plus or space plus space attorney plus Houston Texas. Now if I target at restaurants, I'm gonna put restaurant. If I target salon, I'm gonna make it put salon. Now I don't also have to put anything. I could just leave out attorney and just put plus Houston Texas, and I'll get like all the local businesses in Texas that haven't claimed their Google listing page. And it'll go on for pages and pages. Now, not all these businesses are gonna care. But you're going to see what happens when you, it'll pull up their Google map listing and it'll say, claim this business. It'll have a little line on the left side of your screen that will say, claim this business because this business hasn't even claimed their business for the web, for the Google, for their Google listing. And you can find some clients, particularly if you're looking for digital marketing clients, this is a great way. So let me get, move on. Let me talk about uh, the third way. And uh, this is if you, uh, particularly if you sell advertising of any sort or if your business is going to sell any type of advertising and you want to know whether or not a business, a local business, is willing to spend money on advertising. It's one of the easiest ways. Um, and is you go to Yelp. Hopefully you're familiar with Yelp. If you're not familiar with Yelp, I'm surprised because millions of people a year, a week, a day probably use Yelp to find restaurants, salons, attorneys, you name the type of local business. They're using Yelp because Yelp has user reviews on there. It's almost like the Amazon for local businesses, um, at least to find reviews on businesses. It's fantastic. So here's one of the things that you can do on here is that on Yelp, one of the interesting things about Yelp is that, they, first of all, Yelp, if you have a, a local business, they call you every week to try to solicit you because they're trying to get you to buy their ad package. Inside their ad package, they have for sale videos uh, uh, inside that. So it's not for sale. It's actually part of the package. So if you buy an advertising program with Yelp, they'll include a short 30 second video for your business. So what they actually do is a contract with videographers around the area, which is a great person to be part of your network, by the way, for your for number one, for your local business alliance, is they partner with these local, these, um, uh, these uh, uh, local videographers to go into a business and do a 30 second commercial and they edit it for them. It's like part of their service. Well, they're getting hundreds of dollars and sometimes thousands of dollars from the local business client for this advertising service. So they pay, uh, you know, at least uh, an upfront fee for this video to be done for you. Then, so anytime you see a Yelp profile that has a video on it playing a commercial, like a 30 second commercial of their business, rest assured they're paying Yelp for advertising every single month and it's expensive. Um, so it's more expensive than Facebook advertising if you happen to sell that. So here's what you do. You're going to go to Yelp and you're going to type in very similar to how we did it here. You're going to type in site. Remember how I told you, I tell you, you're going to type in site yelp.com. Then you're going to type in space. You're going to do quotes and you're going to type in watch video. And it's two words, there's space inside there. And then you're going to put plus whatever your market is. Let's say it's restaurant plus Houston, Texas, or whatever area you're in. There you have it. Hopefully you can see that. So Yelp, you're going to do site, colon. This is all inside your handout in your notes. 
and you're gonna you're gonna have them find uh, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna find that if they have a video on their Yelp profile, so you know it'll pull up every listing in Google of every business who's advertising with Yelp. Boom, right there in your local market. Go get them. Because number one, there's a couple reasons. You can even leave with this question. I see. You can, here's how you can leave your voicemail if you were calling them. Okay, I can say, uh, but I wouldn't call. I just email them and say, you know, you're, and put in the subject line, um, your wasted Yelp advertising dollars, or something that's going to catch their attention, or you're wasting money on Yelp advertising because they're going to be like, because you know what? Because they already are. They know they are. They're thinking they are too. That nobody really believes they're getting great value out of Yelp advertising right now. Sorry if somebody's working for Yelp watching this, but. I've dealt with a lot of local businesses that have paid Yelp, and they're not even sure if it's working for them. Um, that, you know, Yelp convinces them that it has, but at the end of the day, it's not a very powerful uh, uh, program for them. Well, I can tell you this. It gets them some results, but it doesn't get them great results. So you can tell them, for less dollars, less money, I can show you how to use digital marketing, particularly if you sell advertising services, and you have a lead-in. So Yelp. <laughs> We're only on number three. <laughs> All right. So another way to find clients. Number four is I have on here uh, speak li speaking locally like to your Chamber of Commerce events. So any type of speaking. Now some of you aren't good speakers, so you might hate this. That's fine. Skip it. Go to the next one. Just fast forward this video or something. <laughs> but if you think you could see yourself speaking in front of groups, and most of you could, because once you put together a little presentation of what you've learned in either my course or other courses you've, you've taken, or if you've been a coach for a long time, just put together a slideshow of a certain topic. I used to do, my speaking topic used to be called something like, you know, how to grow your business in 90 days or less using social media, using the power of social media, something like that. But it was like 70 slides long of a bunch of images and pictures and stats on social media. I whipped it together, it became my presentation I did all around, the, uh, all around the country, but also all around my local market when I first started out. Uh, the local Chamber of Commerce is, is pretty powerful because if you go to the Chamber of Commerce, it's inexpensive to join them for the year. And they have uh, monthly speaking events. And I would probably, you know, volunteer to speak at several Chamber of Commerces. If you live in a big city, there's several Chamber of Commerces. And you can go and speak at all of them. You don't have to belong to all of them to speak at them. So keep that in mind. You, you know, if, so if I talk to anyone who's watched this video who's not speaking, who likes to speak or likes to get in front of groups, who isn't doing it, you're missing out. Because you're going to get dozens of people, sometimes 20, 30, 50, sometimes 100 or more people inside of your, your chamber uh, luncheon that you're speaking in front of. Usually they're luncheons. They do breakfasts and luncheons, but usually it's a luncheon and you're like the, the featured speaker and you get, they give you like 30 minutes um, to speak to that group. And so I want you to uh, take, take, take me up on those opportunities. Go, just contact the local chamber and say, do you have any speaking opportunities? Um, I have a very specific niche in XYZ and uh, I can get your audience who's really excited and I think I'm a fresh new perspective to the area. You're going to be surprised. You know, they'll put you on the docket or just ask for an appointment and they'll give you one and then you can talk about what your topic would be. All right, number four, uh, number five. Number five is local networking groups, okay? So, uh, and this is in your handout, local networking. Okay, you heard me mention, you know, chamber luncheons and chamber breakfasts. So when I first started my agency, here's a secret. When I first started... And something a lot of people don't know. When I first started my agency in 2010, uh, the very first thing, me and my partners and, a, and a, had a couple of salespeople that were working with me, we were kind of all in it together. I said, let's, the first thing we're going to do is every morning we can find a, a, lunch, a breakfast going on, any type of networking breakfast, we're going to go. And they're early. They're usually at 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m., 7.30 a.m. They're always early because everyone goes to the breakfasts and then go to work. So we'd throw on, at the time we were throwing on suits and ties, we thought we had to be all fancy and you don't, you just have to know what the heck you're talking about. But we would throw on, you know, maybe a sport coat and, and jeans and I'd go talk to these local uh, groups. And uh, we did it, we did it, I felt like we were going like three or four of these breakfasts and two or three of these luncheons a week because every chamber of commerce has breakfasts and luncheons. And, and sometimes they have after hour cocktail events too. So you want to find out. Now, if you're in a smaller town or smaller city, you still have a chamber of commerce and you still can do this. If you're in a big city, you got a great opportunity because they're all over. They're all over. There's so many, you couldn't keep yourself busy enough. They couldn't go to enough breakfasts and luncheons. So if you're not going out there networking, particularly if you're starving for clients right now, this was the first way we went and got clients and it was the fastest way we got clients 
we got, you know, I remember we brought on a, a security company that sold locks and securities for homes and businesses. Um, we got several car dealerships this way. We got, um, you name it, we had the business. We had like, in the, in the first like six months, we had 70 businesses and none of them were that alike. We didn't really have a niche. And I do encourage you to go after niches, but in our case, we just went to these lunches and breakfasts and we took on any clients that we could because we wanted to get started. And we, we started helping businesses. So local networking events. Number six is meetup.com. In my course, I'm going to go into this more directly, but I'll tell you this. If you've never been to meetup.com or you don't have the meetup app on your phone, um, you're missing out because, you know, meetup, and I've got some, I'm going to grab some of our notes here. Uh, if, if I don't, I'm not sure, and I don't know, you know, some people have never even been to meetup. They don't even know what meetup is. And, and I'm, I don't understand that because it's, it's, uh, wasn't as known. Yeah. It's to me, it's like the forgotten social network, right? It's actually a social network. Um, and it's the largest network of local groups that you can find to attract clients while helping you, um, lead a community of your own ideal potential clients. So I want you to, um, go on to meetup.com and do a search in your area. And if you live in any type of area that has any type of population at all, I don't care if it's even a smaller city like, you know, Provo, Utah, or Des Moines, Iowa, you're going to find meetup groups. In my area, you know, Northern Virginia and then D.C., there's dozens and dozens, probably hundreds. Um, in fact, and I signed up to be on the notification list for different meetup groups. And there's meetup, there's meetup masterminds, there's business masterminds. There's so many. And if you just, you know, instead of watching TV, uh, you know, or, or, you know, twiddling your thumbs during the day, if you have any free, because I teach this all the time. And I teach it in my course that 80% of your time, particularly when you're new, and I say new within your first year of starting your business, if you're not doing a minimum of a year, uh, if you're not doing a minimum of a million dollars a year in revenue, 80% of your time should be focused on sales. And so how do you spend that 80%? Some of it is going to these type of groups. So meetup.com, um, leverage it, go learn it. Um, you know, go, go to the site and you're going to be like, wow, there's a whole networking community out there of other like-minded business people who can refer clients. It could be part of your number one, your business, local business alliance. It's one of the great ways to find them. Okay. Um, number seven, B and I, um, if you look up B and I, just do a Google search for B and I online, B and I groups, there's B and I networking groups all around the country. Um, and you know, it's an, or it's a paid networking organization that you actually have to be invited into. So you have to tend to find somebody who's in BNI already to invite you into the group. It's not that hard. Um, once you start networking in these local groups, you're going to find people who are part of BNI. They meet, I think it's weekly, uh, or it's bi-weekly or it's monthly. <laughs> I don't even know which they meet usually at a restaurant and it's a group of people and nobody in the group can be from a competing industry. So if you're a social media marketing agency, then nobody else who has a social media marketing agency can be in that BNI group. If you're an accountant, nobody else is in that group can be an accountant. So the group, and usually they're pretty large, they're pretty large groups. It's like a, it's like a large local business alliance that you have to pay for, however. And so, uh, and it's not super cheap. I think it's a few hundred dollars a year. It's not that expensive either, but you do have requirements. So you have to be generating referrals for other people. Um, you have like a quota of them. You have to attend a certain amount of their events or you get booted out and they bring somebody else in who's more serious than you to fill in the industry slot that you'd have filled in that, in that BNI group. So BNI has actually never really been for me, but I have very good friends and I have people in my local business alliance who believe wholeheartedly in BNI. And so I can, uh, with confidence, recommend it. So take a look at BNI and in your local area, just, there's either several chapters of BNI chapters all around your area where you're at right now um, that you can join. I have seen people recently get clients from BNI, so I know it works. And so it's one of the things on my list. Again, this is seven of 17. Let's move on. Number eight is LinkedIn. And more specifically, it's LinkedIn direct outreach. Now, LinkedIn has some paid, uh, some paid versions of it, right? So if you're a recruiter and that's your business, it can help you with recruiting. They have a version for that. If you're a salesperson, which in this case is the one, they have what's called Sales Navigator, which is the one I recommend. I think it's like 60 or $79 a month. 
Um, it's a premium version of LinkedIn, which allows you to in-mail a certain amount of people per month, which means direct message people who aren't in your network. Now, if you don't want to pay for that, you don't have to. Just make sure you're out there constantly connecting and adding people to your network and giving value, of course. Don't go out and just try to solicit people on LinkedIn right away. LinkedIn happens to be, LinkedIn happens to be a subject I know a lot about. There's a book called Social Boom written by Jeffrey Gittimer, one of my mentors, who gave me an opportunity to contribute a chapter called, I think it's called The, the 15 Imperatives of LinkedIn, inside of that book. It was, a, it was also a topic I trained on and taught for about three years in my own local market. is one of my topics I taught to local chamber groups as well as seminars nationally. So I happen to know a lot about LinkedIn. I'll tell you this. You want to grow your LinkedIn network because that's your network. It's, just, it's like a business network online. It's fantastic. And it's a lot easier once you're connected to them that you can then direct message them without having to pay. So you want to add to your network and then you want to be able to message them. And when you message them, you might just message them, and then I'm going to talk about some of these different ways, with some additional value that I'm going to give you in this, and this, still in this video and also in the course. But you can direct outreach and just say, look, you know, I help local businesses with X, and I can see your business is struggling online because I saw your website, which had these spelling and grammatical errors. Um, and I'd love to sit down with you and talk to you about how we can help you get new clients on the web if you're a website designer. Maybe you're, you're um, a local accountant and you just want to simply just let them know that you're, you're excited to be part of their network because you'd like to know a little bit more about them. And then I always say, ask people when you connect with them on LinkedIn something that they never get asked. And that is, ask them who their ideal client is because you might have an opportunity to refer them business on LinkedIn. So if I outreach to somebody who's a, an accountant, I might say, Hey Jim, good to be connected here, or let's get connected here on LinkedIn. And let me know who your ideal clients are, or who your accounting firm tends to service, because if I can think of anyone in my network who might benefit from that, I'll keep you in mind. And that's it. I didn't say, and can you also keep me in mind for my business? No, just simply reach out to them and let them know you'll think of them, but you need, and, and do that. And I want you to be genuine with it. Keep a log of different people in your LinkedIn network who you might be able to refer business to. Because you know what's the most powerful way of all of these ways I'm teaching you to get a business referral, it's part of the referral system, is by giving a referral first, giving a recommendation first. It's one of the most powerful ways in that four-part system I taught in the previous video where you've got to be great at finding, selling, delivering, and generating referrals. One of the ways, I'm giving it to you right now, I'm giving it to you, it's like a sneak peek, is by giving people value and by giving people business, they're going to reciprocate and give you business back. So. There's ways to do that, but right now, let's just keep it, keep it simple. Okay, LinkedIn direct, direct outreach. And here's number nine. I'm going to turn the page here. I'm not short. Uh, number nine is Facebook. Facebook Messenger. Direct outreach. What do you mean, Joe? You're telling me I can reach business owners? on Facebook through their through direct through messenger through through Facebook messenger just message them yes <laughs> that's the answer yes in fact if you're a social media agency consultant uh, or a social media coach I'll tell you it's, it's really interesting if their social media sucks they probably don't have anyone helping them Lord help them if they do they need to fire them but if they do have somebody helping them or they don't guess who's watching the page guess who's reading the Facebook messages the owner particularly for local businesses. Now, here, get this. I just tested this last week because I wanted to make sure I could talk with a little bit of more, with more confidence because I don't use this method a lot anymore. Um, but I, I, went, I was watching Shark Tank. How many of you are fans of Shark Tank? Probably, I don't know, all of you, hopefully. So I was watching a great show, by the way, a great show about how not to present and pitch oftentimes and the value that you get from listening to the sharks. Really listening to their advice is invaluable. So there was a business on there. It was a guy who's representative. He's the owner of the business. And he gets on and he tells a really passionate story. And he has a cause-based business that was started with a cause, but he has a, he's a product. It's not a cause. It's a cause. It has a cause story. It has a social cause behind the story where he gets the product from. But the product that he has, which happened to be in the um, food and beverage, and I, I, I have a, a niche in the hospitality and the food and beverage industry. And so I thought, well, that's interesting. So I was watching his, his and he didn't get a deal on Shark Tank. And for a couple of different reasons, but he didn't get a deal. But no, nonetheless, as you know, everyone who goes on Shark Tanks makes a ton of money. They, they get a ton of sales. They rush in. People go, oh, I want to try the product because it's Shark Tank. It's cool. Give them massive exposure, which shows you why reach and exposure can work for a business. 
Anyway, this particular business was out of the Midwest. And so literally as I'm watching the show, now I had it recorded, so don't do this while the show's live because you're probably getting a lot of messages. But I'm watching it DVR'd about a week old and, uh, or maybe even two weeks old. And I go on to Facebook Messenger. I go to their Facebook page and it's, it's awful. And I'm like, wow. You know, they have like 3,000 fans. It's less than most of my local restaurants, including the ones that I own. And I said, you know, wow. I went to their Facebook Messenger and I messaged and said, you know, I said, you know, I just saw you on Shark Tank. Great, great product. Looks like you have a great product. I'm excited to order it. And, but more importantly, you have a great social cause that doesn't look like it's being told very well on your social media. Your story you told on Shark Tank needs to be conveyed in your social media presence, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And I see you guys have a very, you know, quite a bit, I was very candid with them. I said a very poor social media presence. I bet you're getting sales, but you're, what you're getting for sales in the, in, the, in the audience you're generating, it isn't none of that presence and that brand is, is congruent with what you got going on, on social media. Now, True story, within minutes, and I'm not talking about an hour later, within minutes, the owner, I actually addressed it to the owner, the, the guy's name, and said, hey, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, although I have an appointment with his marketing director and him in a week. But I messaged them and just said, you know, I, that was I, that, I just told you what I messaged him, but he, within minutes, he messaged me back and said, hey, Joe, thanks for reaching out. Sales have been crazy since the show, but we know our social media needs a lot of work. Um, when can you meet? And so I set an appointment with him to meet. Actually, this was like three, two or three weeks ago, but our appointment is for next week and I meet with his director. Actually, we had to reschedule, reschedule the call once, but nonetheless, it worked, right? And I know it worked because I used to do this all the time and I've seen other people do this as well. It's just another way. It's like, can you believe the owner? And it's like, just because he's on a shark tank doesn't mean he's not a business owner who's struggling with social media. So I contacted them right through Facebook. Now, sometimes you're going to hit the people that are managing the Facebook for them. And that's just hit or miss. And so uh, you also can message them. This was on their Facebook business page, but, but you can also try to message them on their personal page, which is fine too. You know, it's whatever it takes. If I didn't get them on, on Facebook, I would have went to LinkedIn then. But in this case, I just wanted to test Facebook. Um, and then, okay, here's another one. Number 10, Facebook page interaction. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're a dentist and you want to target other dentists um, uh, or you're a dental marketing agency and you want to target dentists. If you uh, go to the Facebook page for the American Dental Association, they have like 240,000 fans and they're getting hundreds of comments, hundreds of likes, hundreds of shares per day on, or per post per day on their Facebook page. Now, you could go in there as yourself and comment and interact on that page, but you also can go in there and interact as the Facebook page of your agency on that page. Next to your little picture of your icon on your, on your if, you, if you go to a business page, go there right now, particularly if you're also a page owner, but go to a Facebook page of any type of Facebook page, and then you'll see your little icon where you can put a comment, it'll say comment or share, and you go to comment and you're going to, you're going to see your, your little icon. It's real tiny. And there's a little drop, there's a little arrow next to it. If you click that arrow, you can actually select any page that you also own to do the commenting. So you can co interact as your page on a page. All your interaction on social media on, it should be as one of your pages or as your business page. So that way when people go, Oh, who made that comment? It directs them to your business page, not just to your personal profile. So Facebook page interaction, there's going to be a lot more on this and I'm going to really dive in. I'm going to show you examples of how to do this. I'm going to do it in real time and live in my course, but I wanted you to have this as a way because you could take that right now and start doing it. Um, number 11, building your online funnel. I'm not going to go into this. There's lots of courses on this. One of my mentors, in fact, several of my mentors use this to find all their clients. I have used it to find clients for myself. And that's building an online funnel so people can come to you. They can get their strategy session through you um, to, to meet with you for 30 minutes, which is really just a long sales call um, for you and them. But, you know, there's some really awesome ways to do this. I don't need to teach this in this course because it's already being taught so much out there on how to build an online funnel. Now, the, the, the 
the, the difficult part about it is that it takes a lot of time to set this up, but it is worth it. But more importantly, um, some people just don't have the aptitude for it. They just, for some reason, you know, I watch people who it doesn't work for, you know, maybe it's their personality. It's a lot of different factors. And so I wanted to make sure in this course and in these video series, I gave you ways you can go right now. You don't need to learn a whole system and a whole program for using Facebook just to build your online funnel. And I'm a big fan of online funnels and I'm going to dive into this part. I dive into all of these actually inside my course, but in this one, um, I dive specifically and I will teach some of it, but I'll also direct you to some of my, my, my mentors who teach it even better so you can learn it. But it's just one of many ways. It's actually, I was learning this about a year ago and started applying it. But in the meantime, I was still finding clients using these other methods because they're fast and they're easy and they're free. This is not free. It's going to cost some money to do it, but I do encourage you to play with it. Okay. Number 12. Sorry, this wasn't in very good order. Is LinkedIn groups. So if you go to LinkedIn and you search groups, go to groups. If you don't belong to LinkedIn groups, you're missing it. Okay. So LinkedIn groups are powerful. Basically LinkedIn groups are groups online. Now there's lots of Facebook groups too, but LinkedIn groups are potent because everyone's in, in, a, in a business mindset when they're on LinkedIn. Keep that in mind. I love Facebook, but it's a little bit more like a social party. LinkedIn is business. So you go to LinkedIn, you join a LinkedIn group. There's all kinds of social media groups. There's all kinds of groups. Now here's the secret. Make your own LinkedIn group and start inviting other people in your local businesses to it. Maybe call it a local business, um, uh, new develop, new business development group, new business marketing and sales group, whatever it might be. And you start bringing people into your group. There's two ways that you want to use LinkedIn groups. You want to interact in groups that are already done in your local area or city. There's tons of them. You can just search in LinkedIn groups. You can search keywords specific to cities, etc. Join them, interact with them. Don't solicit in them. It's the biggest mistake I see people make is they don't know how to give value first. You know, you might have to write a blog article or something else in LinkedIn to show that you're willing to give and contribute, not just take. Be a giver, not a taker. Um, if you be a, if you're a giver in social media, if you're a giver in these, some of these tactics, it'll come back to you. Business will come back to you. I'm going to, I'm giving you a ton of tips here. Some, most of my mentors would tell me, Joe, just give them four or five and then tell them the other 10 or whatever, or, you know, the other 10 of the, uh, the 17 are inside the course. So they have to go to the course to get, it. I'm giving you all 17 here. I might deep dive in them in the course, but I want to give it all to you here. I don't want there to be any excuses. I want somebody to go through these three free videos and say, I was able to get clients because of what you taught for free. That is my goal. Okay, because I know you'll want to learn more with me down the road. You'll want to maybe personal coaching. You'll want something else. But I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about how can I get you right now watching this to do some of these things to start getting more clients. That's my goal. So LinkedIn groups, go participate. Go learn everything you can about LinkedIn groups and start participating because it takes no effort. You, instead of watching reality TV in the evening and watching The Bachelor and Survivor and whatever else is on there, start spending time in LinkedIn groups interacting. Just chime in. Offer some pieces of advice. Tell people, great job, man, that was helpful. Interact so they can see who you are and, enter, and build your network. It pays off. And then obviously, when you have your own group, here's the reason. It establishes you as the local expert. You want to be the highest paid, highest profile consultant in your local market? You've got to be perceived as the expert and the authority in your local area. And you can do that also on LinkedIn. Let's move on. Or 12, we have a few more left here. Okay, number 13 I have is audits. It's, what do I mean by audits? This is one of the main ways I give value to other businesses. I will spend time looking at a business, particularly when you're new in business. So if you're just starting out, you can look at a, let's say you sell social media. So you can go and look at their Facebook, look at their Instagram, look at their Twitter, Look at their social media presence. See if they have their social media connected to their Facebook. Do they have it connected to their blog? You know, are, how are they using social media? Are they using Snapchat? Are they using YouTube? Look at everything. If you're a digital marketing agency, you're looking at their website presence and everything. So you'd maybe do a website audit or a so, what I call a social media audit for that business. There's templates you can use. There's automated tools online that you can use. I have a secret weapon. Um, that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, uh, show off in the course on how to do a website audit without, with, with a push of a button. Um, there's, there's a few free ones online, but the one I'm going to show is awesome. But anyway, you can do audits for businesses. 
and you can send them the audit as a way of adding value. So you say, hey, you can go to LinkedIn, do the LinkedIn direct outreach. You can just email the business owner directly and say, I've done a complete audit on your social media presence. You're going to want to read this. Or, hey, your social media sucks, and here's the audit to prove it. However you want to say it, I've done all of it, and it all gets attention. Just get their attention. And that's, that's part of selling. You know, you got to learn. Remember how you got to master selling? That's mastering selling is mastering copy and copywriting. But I love to do audits for businesses, and I'll send them an audit. It's like a, like a, it's like a mini audit, maybe three, four pages. So I used to send just one-page outlines. Here's the 10 things you're doing great and the 10 things you're doing bad. That works too. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Just do it because you're giving value first. Now, you'll tell people what to do, but you won't tell them how to do it. So you just say, look, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to have this, you need to have some cross-promotion. It doesn't look like you have you know, your Facebook talking to your Twitter or vice versa. It doesn't look like you have your you know, share buttons on your blog. You know, make sh- you're going to start auditing their business. Or you can, let's say you're a business coach who teaches um, you know, strategic business and, and business, just peer business coaching across the board, all kinds of things, not just digital marketing. So maybe you look at their website and look, look, I can tell you're not telling your story well. I can tell you're, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your website and I can't tell what you do or what value you bring to the marketplace. And so you, you know, you need some help. So here's some of my recommendations. Here's a couple of books to buy. Just give them advice. Just give them some advice on what to do to change it. And they'll appreciate that because you just kind of audited their business for them. This is a whole module in and of itself, and I'm excited to really go through it more in depth. But I'll tell you what, what I just told you is enough to get started. I don't care if it's a one-page outline, what the business is doing well, what they need to be changing and doing better, or, uh, doing better, areas for improvement, however you want to word it. It doesn't matter. It, you can just email it to them. You don't even need to have a template or anything like that. I have a template uh, below this video so you can use as a template for an audit. But at the end of the day, you don't even need that. You can just email them an outline and say, look, uh, you have an opportunity here to improve and I wanted to help you. Uh, If you want to reach out and talk about it, I'm happy to review this audit with you. I'm available. But that's it. You're not trying to hammer them. The ones that you do a good audit for that really need you and they see enough value in what you provide them will call you, they'll contact you, they'll respond, they'll reply with, hey, can we set up a time or let's meet. But shoot for the value first because not for the solicitation. Okay, let's move on. (laughs) Number 14. Industry events. I love this one. I happen to love my family. I love spending time with my family, so I don't go to a lot of these anymore. Oh, (laughs) just threw my pen. (laughs) Okay, I don't spend a lot. I don't I don't spend a lot of time with these, but industry events. I'm going to switch to blue pen here. Okay, so let's go to it. Industry events. What do I mean by that? So, you know, I, okay. No matter what type of business you have, there are, you know, industry events. There's associations. You know, like for instance, there's the Financial Planners Association, the International Coach Federation, National Association of Realtors, National Association of Professional Organizers, is the National Restaurant Association. Just type in list of restaurant or list of, uh, uh, of associations. <coughs> National Association of Business Women Owners um, or Women Business Owners. There's associations for every single industry. There's events for every single industry. For goodness sakes, if you're in digital marketing or social media, there's a social media event for everything. But if I was a digital marketing agency selling to restaurants, would I rather go to a social media event? Well, I want to go there to learn social media, sure. Or, or if I only had to choose one, though, of where to spend my money, and my focus was on finding clients. Would I pick to go to that, when I could learn most of that online or from a course like this, or would I go to the restaurant associations event that they have in all the different cities? They have a national one, but then they have regional ones. Why wouldn't I go there? That's where all my clients are. All the, all the, while you're at these you know, events patting each other on the back, how great you are at, at you know, kind of owning your own business and practice and social media agency, I'm over at my industry event picking up clients. So. I want you to think about where do your clients go to events, have trade shows, and go to those and grab clients, nationally or in your own area. Now, locally, they're all over. I don't care what city you live nearby. If you have, two, you have to drive two hours to Kansas City because you live two hours outside of Kansas City, drive two hours to Kansas City and go to your industry. You focus on your niche. Go to their trade shows, events. Just walk around. Meet people. Doesn't mean you're walking out and passing out your cards saying, hey, I help businesses, I help restaurants, I help restaurants. No, just go and meet, have them talk to you about their business. This is part of the sales piece. You gotta master, 
I'm teaching how to find clients, but you're going to master how to sell them. You have to master how to get those appointments. And uh, in tomorrow's video, we're going to talk about more about how to get results, the sales pieces in the course. But I want you to think about um, uh, what events your clients are at. Okay. Now, there's two ways to interact. I'm, I'm, one more thing. i got to just share this with you. Uh, one of the ways I met one of my mentors is I actually went to their event and I sponsored the event. I paid 10 grand. That's true. It's a true story. 10 grand to be a table at the back of this person's event that they were putting on. I had a booth there. I got them as a client and I got other clients from people that I attended the event. Way worth the 10,000. That relationship's been going on for years now. So, do you have to do that? No. You can just go to these events and network and be great. But if you've got the financial means, you might want to be doing both. Let's keep moving. Number 15. This one's funny. Local newspaper ads. <laughs> Anybody who's advertising in a local newspaper, number one, they need help. <laughs> because they wouldn't be advertising. They're looking for more business. So I like that. So they're already prime, and they're willing to spend money on ads. The other, the other number two is they need help because they shouldn't be advertising in a local newspaper. <laughs> so I don't care what kind of business coach you are, agency owner or consultant, get them to stop doing that. right? Or if they just have a lot of money, say, okay, great, but let's compare it to what I'm going to teach you. I remember one of my restaurant clients, um, when I first met with them, they were, let me just do something real quick. They were, uh, they were advertising and uh, in a local magazine. They weren't tracking it. They were paying hundreds of dollars per month to do it. They were doing it for brand awareness because they thought they had to be in that local magazine. And we stopped it and they never missed a beat. <laughs> Financially, they went up because of what we did for them instead. Local newspaper ads though, whole bunch of local clients show up in local newspaper ads that are all willing to spend money on advertising who just don't know any better. So if you sell digital marketing services in particular, call them, they need help. If you sell any type of coaching business though, they're looking for help, they're a cry for help. Okay, let's move on. Uh, number 16, lead lists. Lead lists. What do I mean by lead lists? Well, you can go to InfoUSA, I think, .com, or just type in lead lists in Google, and you're going to find all these different lead brokers. Now, some of them are good, some of them are bad. InfoUSA is one of the good ones. Um, do your due diligence. And you can buy email lists. You can buy telephone lists, address lists for sending audits to. You can, sometimes that's the cheapest list, by the way, the address list. And then you can just send audits to those lists, address it to the owner. Um, some of these lists will come with the owner's name, some of them won't. So you want to find all that stuff out. If you've got the financial means to spend a few hundred dollars, sometimes a few thousand dollars, you can buy very large lists. There are industry lists too in your industry. Do some research on Google. You're not using Google well enough. Go to Google and type in your industry lead list and you might be surprised what you find. There are lead lists of people. And some of these lead lists are well researched to give you intel that you could even use, then use inside of an audit to send them or to in a direct outreach. So lead lists, more on that later, but I want you to understand that that's one of the most powerful ways uh, to get started as well. So here's number 17. My, this is my favorite. doesn't mean we use it all the time, but it's my favorite. <laughs> Competitors, clients. No mercy. Right? What movie is that from? Uh, I love looking at clients of competitors, particularly when I know those competitors suck at getting results. Now, all's fair in love and war. And in this case, in business, you know, I want to leave my competitors in the dust. I have a lot of respect for them. I would applaud them, shake their hand, and tell them, good luck. I'm glad you're, 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 you're helping the economy. We're in business. But man, if I can outperform them and I can prove it, I'm going to go after some of those clients. There's a couple reasons why. You know those clients are already really willing to pay the money and they may not be getting the results they deserve. So if I know of a particular couple of competitors, and I happen to do know in my industry, uh, I'll go after their clients. Now, I, I, 
I do this within reason. So there's actually a couple really big national agencies that do a really crappy job and they really do. And I think they're doing a disservice to their client base. And so I have no problem telling the client base that. I won't really bash the competition. I'll just say, look, I don't know whether you're getting results or not. And I know they're not. But if you're not, you, we need to have a conversation because I think you might be throwing your money away. I've gotten clients that way. Um, so, but you already know they're willing to spend the money on your industry and business. So pay attention to who your competitors' clients are because they're fair game. They're fair game. I don't care who, who what anybody tells you. Um, at the end of the day, you want to be respectful about it, but they're fair game. So, and they may need help. No one's married to anyone. Remember that. No one's married to anybody. Now, they might be locked into a contract, which is even more of a reason for them to get away. Because I stopped doing contracts a long time ago when I realized that having a contract meant I was scared. Because if I'm getting someone results, remember the third piece of the system, the triangle? Finding clients, selling clients, getting them results, getting referrals. If I can get them results, they're never going to leave. And they're never going to leave you as well. Which is why in the next video, we're going to talk about how to get some results. I'm actually going to give a case study of how I got some results uh, uh, I'll give maybe a couple of different examples. I'm still trying to figure out what that's going to look like, but I'm going to do something over the shoulder where you can see how you get results for clients. And, uh, that's the next video. And just, but to recap here, you got 17 ways. There's no excuses. None of this is just pick up the phone, call cold. I didn't say go door to door and just start knocking on local businesses doors and walking in. I'll tell you what, that type of interruption pisses businesses off. Um, it's not respectful. It's not professional. It doesn't work very well. So I'm going to encourage you to look at these 17 ways and say, which ones work best for me? Just pick two or three of them. Pick one, pick two or three and say, look, which is going to work for me? And then go and do that. It's a little overwhelming. It's a lot of different ways to go find clients, but there's no more excuses. And so I'm here to help you do that. Find clients, sell clients and get them results. Tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about how do you get those clients results, particularly once you find them and they're become your client. How do I get them results? And, and that's where your focus needs to be once you've got them on board. So thanks for listening. I know it's a long video. It's been an hour long uh, uh, video here. I hope you've appreciated some of the things that I've, I've shed some light on and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video as well. See you then.